There are many tiers to choose from when you buy a controller. The first class controllers have excellent buttons, well calibrated sticks and additional features, all at a very high price. From there, a slope where we exchange quality and features for a lower price. The cheapest ones usually have fully calibrated sticks, spongy buttons and little theaters. But every time I see another chip controller, I think, this might be the one. The one that breaks all expectations and it's good, nice and cheap. Or will it be another sad attempt to sell the same components with another shell? So let's see where the BSP D3 fits in. A chip telescopic controller with a few surprises. Welcome back, I'm Claudio and this is Zero to Tech. This controller is one of those products that suddenly began to appear everywhere in ads. <laughs> and truth be told, at first I discarded it because it was too cheap. But after pressure from many subscribers that I should give it a try, convinced me that it might be something special. <laughs> and they were right. Let's see why. This is one of those famous unbranded Chinese controllers that often pack generic components. And the most unbranded because, seriously, no matter how hard I searched, it's impossible to find something about the company. I ordered it from AliExpress and the box arrived like this, <laughs> quite crushed. Fortunately, when we open it, it comes in a plastic tray that protects it. And it doesn't include much else. A cheap USB-C cable to charge it, and the manual. The design follows the same idea as almost every telescopic controller we have seen, mainly the original Game Zero X2, with two inverted sides emulating the Switch Joy-Cons. Even the color I choose clearly copies the Switch, but there are many options to choose from. It is incredibly light. The plastic is soft and feels cheap, but it works. The handles even have a bit of texture for the grip. When you open it, it doesn't feel smooth. It scratches and squeaks, but it works. It does not open very much, but it is large enough that you don't need to. It can fit phones up to 173mm, so almost all will fit without an issue, even with a case. On the right and the left side, it has rubber blocks to hold the phone, and on the bottom, two plastic limits. On top of the rubber blocks, the plastic makes a wedge to hold the phone back. The two sides are well thought, leaving some space where the speakers normally are. It is a simple but functional design. It helps a lot to compensate for the fact that the telescopic system does not have much strength. The left part has a huge hole to accommodate the cameras without scratching them. They played it safe and it seems that they thought about the Poco X2 Pro. But if you have a phone with an exaggerated module, like the Xiaomi Mi 12 Ultra, just be careful to check. On the bottom, there is the USB-C port to charge the battery, which lasts more or less 20 hours of gaming. It has the typical buttons you would expect from any controller. The only additional one is the power button, which also works as a menu button. On the back, it is completely black and has two additional buttons called M1 and M2. The hold on the controller is much better than I expected, mainly because there is enough space in the back to put your fingers. But not being so tall, you will have to put some fingers below, which gets tiresome after playing for a long time. But in general, all the controls are accessible and easy to use. Even the buttons on the back are in a good position. The only issue is the position of the right stick because, depending on how you use the front buttons, you might touch it by accident, something common in these controllers. Future-wise, it is a big surprise. With Bluetooth protocols for Android, iOS, Windows with X input, Switch, and even PlayStation 3 and 4. And wired for all except iOS. It is also compatible with any device that uses direct input or X input. Switching between the different modes is easy. It's a matter of pressing one of the buttons while turning it on. And although it has all these modes, you can only connect one device. If you change modes, you have to pair the device again. <laughs> and it is so much better than the typical Chinese controllers, such as Mocute, Ipiga, and Saitak, which only support their modes for shooting B3 and that native Android mode. Here, by adding X input, you open the compatibility and it's hard to find a system where it doesn't work. Even then, it also includes the shooting V3 mode for Android and iOS. But for the iPhones, you need iOS 13 or lower, which I doubt anyone has. Many of these controllers reuse the same components, so we can hope that new generations will use the same ones as the V3. That will fill the market with cheap but good options. 
again, with more compatibility, but more importantly, with the surprises we will see next. We start, as always, with the most important component, the analog sticks. When I try these chip controllers, I always expect the same. <laughs> Bad calibration, no rounding at all, dead zones, and sudden jabs. But the best surprise of the D3 is that the sticks works as they should. First of all, though they feel cheap, with a very light plastic, on the top they have a rubber-like material and texture so they won't slip. The movement is quite smooth. There is no mechanical feeling when moving them or changing direction. Only the spring, which, if anything, has a little more resistance than usual. The trouble is good, it is not as long as that of a console controllers, but it is much that the Joy-Con type sticks, and the clicks works very well. A little hard, but clear and there is no issues with the sticks position. But the best part is the calibration, it is close to perfect. In the saturation test they are perfectly linear, no dead zones. You can go easily through all the percentages and right when you hit the end, it marks 100%. Filling the figure was not a problem, and it has rounded corners. They're not perfect, but they're way better than most controllers we have tried. Even in the circularity test, they have less than 5% margin of error. This shows us that there is no excuse for bad sticks anymore. We tried it first with Fortnite, and very well. The medium and long movements works exactly as you would expect. It just took a little longer to adapt to the short moves, because you have to press very very little, but you get used to quite fast and it works just as well for racing games. Very small movements have to be shorter than normal, but it works with no issues. So driving the cars with smooth movements, as it should be, is not a problem. It's just a shame about the lack of analog balance. And if you connect it to Android in PC mode, it uses the name Xbox Wireless Controller, <laughs> and that means native support for Apex Legends and Call of Duty Mobile. The only detail is that you have to tell what kind of controller to use. It's a matter of selecting Xbox and all set. R2 and L2 feel so good that aiming and shooting in these games is a joy. And for the few remaining unsupported games like Genshin Impact and PUBG Mobile, the controller works perfectly with Mantis for button mapping. It also has the shooting V3 mode, but it's famous for bans, so I don't recommend using it. There is no longer an excuse for a controller with fully calibrated sticks. If this worked perfectly, Price is no excuse for the lack of rounding, dead zones or jumps. It's a pleasant surprise that there is a controller with such good sticks for the price. Now, let's see the rest. We start with the front buttons. These have the Xbox arrangement ABXY. They are made of transparent plastic with the letter on the back, and if you see them with the controller turned off, they all have the same white color. But when you turn it on, each one is illuminated with a different one which looks very good, and it will help if you like to play in the dark. This is something we have never seen in any other controller. Unfortunately, they don't feel so good. They use membrane and have a lot of trouble, which is nothing unusual. The problem is that they need a lot of pressure and they feel slow to come out. But truth to be told, they worked perfectly in all the tests. They had no issues, but using them is a bit more tiresome than normal. And I don't know if they really are slow, they just feel like. Where it does hampers a lot is in the D-pad. It is exactly the same as the front buttons. That means you don't have a clear place to put your finger, and it works fine, mainly in the separation test. It is obviously impossible to make diagonals by accident, but it is not comfortable to play with. And these type of D-pads are usually not the best for the sequence test. But here I had no problems getting used to quickly and could execute all the special moves. But you still have to get used to the timing. It will take more practice than normal, unless you come from a Game Series X2. The rest of the buttons feel much better. The shoulder ones are marked with the Xbox letters LB, RB, LT and RT. And unlike the front ones, they feel great. They use some kind of switch that has a very good tactile feel when pressed. They are excellent. Start, select and the power button have a very similar feel. And they also make noise. Finally, there are the additional buttons on the back, but it's something weird because no matter what I tried, I could not make them work. In the manual, it mentions that they exist as part of the diagram, but it never says how to use them. The only lead I had was these images that say that they activate the turbo mode and the sniper mode, but I tried everything and no luck, even with the shooting V3 app. So they remain a mystery. Too bad because they are in a very good position and feel very good. 
If you have one and know how to use them, I would appreciate if you would leave it in a comment. The front buttons are imperfect but usable, like the D-Path, and two mysterious buttons that don't seem to do anything, but for the price is completely acceptable. It has no faults or issues, everything works and is in its place, and while buttons require a bit more pressure, here is nothing you cannot get used to. Finally, we tested the rest of the supported platforms, starting with the iPhone where the iOS mode also forgets about the old iCave and implements a mode compatible with M5, <laughs> but surely not certified by Apple, otherwise they will be taking all the money from how little it costs. But it detects it as a PlayStation 4 controller and works on all the games with support. On the Switch, it connects as a Pro controller, although here there are some limitations. It has no motion sensors or gyroscope, so all those features won't work on the games. The second is that the front buttons are Switch. They respect the letters as the game says, but it means that they are the other way around compared to the original controller. At least the power button serves as the home button, although it does not turn on the Switch. Finally, to connect it to the PlayStation 3 and 4, just like the original controllers, you simply plug it and it will pair, and once it's done, you can unplug it to use it via Bluetooth. Here the same as in the Switch. It works, but you don't have the gyroscope, and a major miss, at least with the PlayStation 4, is that you don't have the touchpad button. At least the power button does replace the PlayStation 1. Finally, we have Windows. It uses X input, so there are no problems. It works perfect for Xbox, xCloud, Epic Store, and Steaming games. We finally got rid of the direct input limitation. It's a difference between wanting to be compatible or just wanting to sell a controller. Truly a great surprise. To finish the video, the reason we are reviewing this controller, <laughs> the price. The best place to find it is in AliExpress. Search for it as the BSP D3 or as D3 Type-C, and it should give you a lot of results. The price depends a lot on the exchange rate, but I paid about $17 for mine with shipping included. Seriously, I've never seen a controller that works this well for the price. But how are they able to make a controller with so much compatibility and so cheap? <laughs> Simply by skipping any kind of certification. They implement the protocols without notifying anyone, and since these companies are based in China, it is not easy to go after them. I hope this opened the eyes of companies that want to charge you just for letting you play with them, even if they don't have any value. Yeah, I'm talking about you, Team Apple. If you're on the fence about buying a controller for your phone, but you don't want to spend a lot, I can recommend the D3. It really punches above its weight. But if you want to get an idea about what a controller four times the price can do, check this video about the Game Series X2 and the Razer Kish. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Remember, retro games, modern technology, zero to tech.